All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of my Weon Syncom Core Guide. Uh, so today we're going to be going over the basics of how to set up an outfit for such a system like Syncom Core. This also can apply to other smart systems on the market today, uh, including legacy systems like Cantrol, Carbide, uh, systems from other manufacturers such as Blueprint, uh, Pathfinder, and Matrix. So, some of the things that a lot of people uh, forget to realize about Core is that you can uh, kind of set up all these lights flash through it, and that is really the best way to utilize this. Um, if you're going to be using split color lights, so, um, you know, ions are split color, so this side's red, this side's blue, um, you're really wasting the potential of this and also kind of wasting your customer's money too by utilizing this because you're not going to be able to get anything good out of uh, split color light heads with this. So if you are going to be utilizing such a smart system, this goes for everything, uh, utilize either single, duo, or trio color light heads or dual or tri-color light heads. Um, so what I have here is a basic little setup uh, simple, easy, that we're going to kind of go through to talk about how you should plan your builds, especially if you're new to this. Uh, this can be used for outfitters that are getting into this. Uh, people who are putting this into personally owned vehicles, fire, EMS, whatever. And also for uh, the end users, fire, EMS, please to also look at to kind of realize what they're getting and how their systems should have some sort of basic setup to. Uh, to make sure that it is being utilized to its full potential. So what we have here is we have uh, kind of simulating a Tahoe here because that is what I'm used to the most. So what we have here is four ions in the grill. Uh, these are dual color. I just pulled these images off of Wayland's website. So red and blue, red and blue, red and blue. We can just imagine, you know, maybe this side's red, white, this side's blue, white, whatever your imagination wants. But the important part is these are dual color. Uh, same with these M4s, these are the driving light ones, so these are dual color. Uh, one thing to be aware about is that if you do want these to work well with Suncom Core, uh, there is the ones that are t true dual color, so, you know, red, white, or and red, white, or blue, white, red, white, and then there's the ones that are split color with the white override, so one side's blue, the other side's red, and then you have full white override. Um, if you really want to, you can use that, but it's not going to look that good, and the red and the blue are going to combine together and make it purple. Uh, we'll just imagine that these are like in the side windows or something, red and blue, and then of course uh, in the back hatch or in the license plate or whatever, and then on the middle we have a Sencom core here controlling it all. So we're going to go over some of the wiring basics, I'll move these down a little bit real quick. Uh, so. At least from Whalen lights, I know it's different um, for sound off lights. Uh, Whalen lights, uh, depending on how many colors you have, um, there will be a trigger wire for each color. So these are duo, so that means there will be two trigger wires, a um, red and I think a white wire, if I remember correctly. Um, again, check the installation guide, always. Um, but there are two, that's what we're concerned about, so there's two wires and those wires will trigger each color, but you have set up to do that. So, um, again, when you're utilizing a system as is and you want the lights to be flashed through the system, not individually by themselves, all these light heads here come with an integrated flasher. Uh, these are not dummy light heads. Um, they're not like on uh, certain models of the outer edge, which come with dummy light heads that can only be controlled through a flasher. Um, so. These are, have their integrated flasher, so that means uh, each color will have to be set to steady burn. And another thing to look out for is that when you trigger both wires together at the same time, uh, you will get another override. So typically that will be, say you have a red light, red white light head. Um, if you trigger red and white at the same time, the white will take over. So make sure you're um, mapping your outputs correctly. We'll get to that in a little bit. So you want your red and your blue triggers to be set to steady burn, along with all the other colors. Same for the M4s. Everywhere you want everything to be set 
to steady burn. That's how these will be flashed. So going from there, uh, another thing you're going to have to do is plan out your build. So this is a pretty basic build right here. Um, this is not something I would probably do. Um, of course, we're leaving out a light bar or whatever or anything, but this is a very basic build. Um, so when it comes down to it, you're also going to have a plan on how many outputs are you going to be utilizing. So already right here, this would be eight outputs here. If you want to control each light and each color individually, that would be eight wires and eight outputs. All right, so Suncom Core <clears throat> comes based with 23 outputs. And right now, if you want to control each one of these light heads individually, you're taking up eight outputs. And then the same with these two. These would be another four outputs. So you're up to 12 outputs already, and you're only at the front. Over here, another four outputs, so 16 outputs. And then back here, another four, so 20 outputs. You're nearly maxed out on outputs as it stands right now with a basic Suncom core and a very basic light package. So one way to get by this is of course integrate an output expansion module. So something you could do is these come in two different variants, uh, the CM8 which is 8 outputs and the CM16 which is 16 outputs and both of these also have four inputs that you can put into it too. So you could, at the front of the vehicle, uh, get a CM16 and wire all that into this and then run the um, WCAN cord back into the core. Or, if you don't want to do that, you can be smart with your resources and you can combine the colors together on each side. So that would be, let me see if I can visualize this a little bit better. Uh, it's going to be a bit big. but. Go visualize this a little bit. So say you have red wire, red wire, red, red, and these wire colors aren't going to be, you know, exact to everything, but we'll just simulate and then blue, 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 blue. So what you could do is you could tie together the colors. So the blue to the blue the blue to the blue here and then we'll go back and get our red wire again the oh that is not red this might have to overlay a little bit too sorry about that the red to the red uh, that's a bad representation actually we don't want to do that because I'll represent it being tied in line so red to the red we'll just get rid of that real quick all right, that's fine. Um, gotta have to do the same over here again. I apologize for that one. Again, I'm just trying to make this quick, simple, easy uh, to understand. So we'll go here, right to the red. And then what we have here is we have both sides are combined. Well, both colors are combined now, giving you a little bit less outputs. So that means that instead of eight outputs we've reduced it to four and you can also from here there we go we'll you know say so it goes all the way back to there all the way back to here so then you still have some customizability and able to do some nice things with your patterns and stuff because they can alternate side to side whatever you want so now you've reduced it down to four outputs same here you can do the same exact thing here so you know red, red, white, and white, of course, you know, I'll just use a blue wire. So now you've reduced your outputs up here significantly. Again, do the same thing throughout the vehicle. Um, again, that all depends upon your customer though. Some of your customers might want full individual control over every single light head because they have some weird patterns they want to do or you know up front they might want zigzag or something like that a uh, pattern where you're going to need you know individual control over each light head um, oh, I just erase those light heads that's fine um, or you know you're making a custom traffic advisor in the back and you know you need to do traffic advisor patterns you're going to need control over each light head 
Um, so that's one of the things you're going to have to realize when you're building these is that you're going to have to first see how many outputs you're going to be working with and try and reduce that amount of outputs as much as you can without losing functionality. Again, like I said, you can utilize a output expansion module, very helpful, you know, put one up front, one in the back of the vehicle, centralize it a little bit, and then just run those um, weekend wires back to the Sencom core. Or a uh, neat little feature that the Sencom cores have is on the control head now, there is a weekend pass through that you can utilize too. Uh, so instead of having run those cords even further back, um, you can just run it to your control head up front and then that will automatically pass through to the core which may be you know located in the back or under a second row seat or in the trunk or something like that. So that's kind of how you basic, do a basic setup of a CENTCOM core system and really any other smart system. Um, one little note is that uh, Blueprint is a little bit different um, because sound off uh, light heads can I believe, if I remember correctly, uh, my sound off rep is going to hopefully educate me a little bit more about this, but um, those, even their tricolor light heads are two wire. So you're eliminating a lot of wiring and stuff for that. And I don't know, it's a pretty awesome system, but again, I'm coming from primarily Whalen, so. And the next part to this, we'll be doing a part two where we'll be going over the actual programming part in command. Um, going over just basic programming of how to set everything up, uh, naming stuff, and just kind of making sure that's all nice and organized so that it's a lot easier to understand so that you're not getting confused while you're programming. Because that's another big issue is that the programming part is something that a lot of people are afraid of, mostly because they haven't done too much of it, especially, um, you know, if you're coming from something like a CENTCOM Sapphire, or even, guess what, you might just be using like a SA6 or something, something very basic where there's really no computer programming required. A lot of people think that, you know, they need a software engineering degree to utilize this stuff, and you really don't. You just gotta go through it slowly, utilize your resources, and just ask for help um, or call uh, technical support or something and they'll kind of guide you through this stuff. So like I said, we'll be making a part two to this, showing off the programming in the software of a setup like this. So stay tuned for that and I hope you all have a great day and have learned something. Again, have any questions or anything, shoot me a message, leave a comment. Also check out the Whalen Command Software Group on Facebook. It's a great resource if you need help with this stuff. So once again, you guys have a great day.